and today we have the experts of the experts. So before we get started, please go ahead and subscribe, smash that subscribe button on the <laughs> podcast. Come, content is profit. If you are live with us, I smash that like, share with the people that you that you feel like this is going to be useful with. Yeah. Uh, follow and us on social media. Go ahead. Yeah, feel free to comment. We are recording this live for those that are watching it right now. If you have any questions, we will answer all of them. We'll stay a little bit over after yeah. we are done and we'll answer any questions that you may have. Yeah, so if you are listening to the podcast right now, make sure you tune in Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, afternoon after 5 p.m. We are like going live crazy on this and answer all your all your questions. So feel free to tune in at Beast Roscoe. All right. So this guy, Pablo Gonzalez, Pablo Gonzalez, the great, great, great Pablo that we're bringing to you guys today is obsessed with human connection and he's used his expertise to manage a 120 person, $50 million construction business at just 25 years old. Um, mm. He was, a, he was able to build various young professional groups and charities as well. This is amazing. It is amazing. He was actually named Latino Leader of the Future by Latino Leaders Magazine and a top 20 under 40 for Brickle Magazine. Those that don't know, Brickle is in Miami. He's now a professional speaker and the founder and chief executive connector at Connect with Pablo. I love it. Uh, woo. A content marketing community creation agency. That's exactly how he describes that business, providing that community creation. It is the future of business development. That's right. More than anything, he's dying to be your friend. And <laughs> welcome, everybody, Pablo Gonzalez. Let's go, Pablo. Yeah. Is this happening? Is this really happening, guys? Oh my gosh, man. It I thought is. I, I think that was like the longest intro ever, but like you are super deserving of this thing and more. We're hey, so excited well, to have you in here. You, Thank you so much for coming up with that intro, Luis. I really appreciate that. I don't know I where know. you got all that info oh, about me, but I, it was really, really nice. I mean, there's one thing about, you know, we talk about content conversations and Facebook stalking and, you know, eh, I think I think that came out of yeah, that. Eh? He, he, <laughs> might, he might have done his research, but you know what? I am happy that you're here and that you got to experience the whole the whole shebang of the the live episodes, you know, like making mistakes, you know, oh. messing up. That That's the fun part of it. <clears throat> for the, yeah, for those listening, we're just actually like talking like behind cameras on how we do this live and you know how we messed up last week and we, again we had a massive mess up but guess what doesn't matter it doesn't matter it, ma it makes it way more fun so again pablo welcome we are so excited to have you here <laughs> and i think actually I the viewers are excited to see you here yeah well, listen, I'd be surprised about the mess up if I didn't listen to every single thing that you guys put out and wasn't your number one fan. I totally saw it coming. <laughs> oh, I just man. Want, I, just want, I just want to be part of the intro. Like, I want to be like, this is Luis, and this is Luis, and this is Pablo. You know, like, I, I think we could have worked that in, guys. That's all I'm saying. I, I, I think we should, definitely. I love it. We should do one at the end. At the end, we should do one just like saying goodbye, like, hey, guys, this is Luis, and Luis, and Pablo. I'm Thank in. you for tuning I'm in. in. I'm in. All right, all right, I'm we'll do that at the end. All right, Pablo. So uh, <laughs> let's get this thing started because I am even though like we've met you for quite a while I'm very interesting to to know part of your story like uh, you said obviously you have some background in Miami uh, I love and hate Miami at the same time very strong feelings I've that, there I've heard that before. I've heard that before. <laughs> but I want to know uh, you know like how everything with community building and how everything with this content strategies that you are doing, what what's the root of it? Like how how did everything start? How did this passion start? Mm -hmm. Episode one. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. So I grew up in Miami, right? I totally understand the love and hate Miami relationship. I think that Miami is a very unique thing and you, you can love it or hate it. It's kind of like the halfway house between a third world country and the United States of America. <laughs> and that has good things and bad things that you can like or not like, right? Um, but for whatever reason, I consider myself a quintessential Miamian, right? Like I was born in Venezuela like you guys, but I grew up here in the States. My dad's Cuban, grew up in Miami. And, uh, you know, there's really nowhere else that I identify with more. So I just want to say I love that place. And I totally understand anybody that hates it. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Um, so, so so tell me, like, you grew up in Miami, right? And then, so, then what? Like, as you're growing up, like, how do you find, yeah. like, this passion? 
yeah, man, listen, dude, I'm, I'm the youngest of three and I'm the most American person in my family. So like my, <laughs> my, my whole, my whole outlook on life is being an outsider insider, right? When I first moved here from Venezuela, like there was no other Venezuelans in Miami, right? I was the only Venezuelan in Miami. Now there's a bajillion, right? But <laughs> I, I, I enrolled in preschool at a time when I was the only kid that didn't speak English walking into my preschool. And my first formative memory is walking into that classroom and just not knowing how I'm going to fit in. At this point, my brother and sister already spoke English. I was like the one guy in my family that didn't. Yeah. And that kind of marked me forever. And then a year later, we moved to Spain where I enrolled in a British school where I thought I knew English and Spanish at this point, but I didn't understand the British British or the Spanish Spanish. So yeah. again, I had that same formative memory and that's just kind of been my obsession forever is how do I, how do I fit in and how do I belong? And as a little kid, I just, I was the the little kid that made friends with everybody and, and every adult. And, and then as I grew older, whenever there'd be a new person that come to school, I'd be the first guy to make friends with everybody. And it's just, it's been a lifelong obsession yeah. that, now, late in my career, in my late 30s, have I've been able to figure out how to actually monetize. <laughs> Dude, I, I feel like that's amazing, right? Like, it, um, you know, I think most of us, right? Like, let's say, you know, we migrated, obviously, we, we're a little bit older, but there is a lot of families, a lot of people out there that might have, like, some of our listeners might have kids, right, that they might be moving around. And and that connection factor, you know, when you, when you go to a new place can be somewhat of a challenge. So if... To me, like, it's, it's incredible that, you know, you took that and uh, and completely turn it upside down where it's like, okay, what, like, what makes this a thing? And how can I, like, provide some value now in my, in my adult life, right? Like, to, not just to people with, like, with massive companies too. So, that's amazing. Like, what, what was, like, that, that one thing that, like, made you, like, take that next step and be like, okay, I can actually make this thing something very valuable for for my life and for other other people's lives dude i was just lucky man honestly i guess it could start it's kind of it's kind of a long story of how i got to that step but it really started i graduated my college career got a job as a executive in training and construction for a fortune 500 company that's that beginning piece of my bio i was running a, a big operation early in my career yeah. never really liked it 2000 and I moved out to California. I became a green building expert. 2009, I moved back to Miami. I became a, uh, I started my first entrepreneur venture, right? Uh, green building consulting company. And luckily, my best friend, Eric Gilbert, because I know that Rich and Wit are watching this thing on Facebook Live right now, and Gilbert's going to be mad if I don't mention it. <laughs> love it. Sends, love me, it. S- <laughs> sends me an email saying Habitat for Humanity is starting a young professionals group. Mm. And quite frankly, out of total self interest, I'm like, I'm in this construction game. I should join this group and see if I can use it for business development. And it didn't really work out like that, but it did take me down this whole parallel path in getting involved with Habitat. We started this young professionals group that's still around, right? Yeah. Like there's still, now it's many years past and I'm a founder of this thing and it, and, and it still exists. But it then Amazing. got me on the board of Habitat for Humanity. It got me into this like leadership Miami program like you guys did leadership jacks, right? That's why I'm such a big fan of these programs. Got me on the board of multiple charities and I started replicating the formula of what worked well for us in that group across other philanthropic organizations. And at a certain point, my career took another turn where my green building consulting company got acquired. And by acquired, I mean my biggest customer bought me out, right? And, yeah. and just like took on all my contracts, brought me in house. I became director of sustainability in this construction company. And then a couple years into that, I realized these guys were just trying to make me patch a hole and forget about me. And they... You know, I didn't really have a career track inside of it. And I started trying to figure out how I could become more valuable. Yeah. And obviously, you know, you know who the most valuable person is in a company is the person that brings in the business, right? So I, I was trying to figure out how I can be a business developer. And at a certain moment, you know, I I've been named top twenty under forty for this magazine and the Latino leaders thing. I I, I started it. developing this big network from being in this philanthropic organizations and networking my way through and doing all this stuff. And at a certain moment, I just figured out how to monetize that audience. And it came when I got invited to be on a panel for smart cities. My CEO didn't want to go. So they sent me in instead. I go, I stand on this stage and I'm on, I'm on this like panel with the head of Latin America for, I think it was Cisco systems. 
and the head of the Smart Cities Initiative for like the World Bank or the International Economic Fund. Two people I don't belong on the stage with, right? Yeah. So I, I get up there and I just do my thing and I talk about smart cities and green building and blah, blah, blah. When I get off the stage, there's a line of six people deep waiting to talk to me. And that's the first time that that's ever happened to me. And at that moment, I'm like, okay, a stage is valuable, right? Like, yeah. I mean, everybody thought I was more important than I thought I was, right? <laughs> like it, like two, two or three people were like vendors trying to sell me something, thinking I had any kind of pull in my company. Uh, two, <laughs> two, other, two other guys were just like, yo, man, how do I find a guy like you, like trying to hire me? And one other guy came up to me seeking mentorship. Will Beckham, still a good friend of mine to this day. Awesome. And, 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 and I, just, I just had this like aha moment of like, dude, this stage thing is like a celebrity kind of feeling and what's going on here, right? And like the credibility that you get by being on a stage. So I'm like, how can I make a stage for somebody else? And at that moment, I'm like, there's this like controversial project going on in Miami. There's this high rise going on in Coral Gables okay. that people in Coral Gables don't really want. But what they don't realize mm. is that this high rise on top of the public transportation infrastructure is going to incentivize more public transportation. It's called transit oriented mm. development. So I reached out to that developer and I was like, listen, man, I care about this stuff. I have an audience of young professionals that should know about this. And I created this event where my pitch to him was, I'm going to put you on stage with a politician on the board of one of my charities, a yeah. uh, land use attorney that I've done a bunch of like nonprofit work with. And we're going to talk about the need for transit oriented development. And your project is going to be like the background of this thing. And, and we're going to talk about it to the young professionals of Miami. The guy was obviously super pumped that I did it, showed up, had this little event, put him on stage, created these relationships. The following week, he's asking us if we're bidding on this $60 million project or not, right? And that <laughs> wow. completely changed my paradigm yeah. as a business builder and a business developer in my company. And then at that point, you know, I didn't realize it yet, but I had stumbled into this concept that I now espouse of community creation for business development. And at that point, I knew that I had been long enough in the construction industry that I never really liked. And I just started in my networking and everything I was doing, I just started telling everybody, listen, man, I think there's a different way to do it. I think I want to do this. You know, like every idea I had, I just started kind of like pitching it to everybody yeah. until at a certain point I got the opportunity to do it somewhere else. And, you know, that that's 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 how it all started, right? Like that's how the whole human it. connection thing came. And then, you know, we're definitely going to end up getting into content and reverse engineering how you put this stuff at scale. But yeah. that, that's where it all started. That's how I say, I feel, I feel, I think it's fascinating how you had that like very first experience on a stage and, and obviously we're not touching this um, on around content, obviously, because content is uh, at some degree a very, can be a bigger stage too. But uh, the fact that when you came down and you had that realization was, let me help others with this. How can I put somebody else on a stage? And I'm very curious to know, like, why was that the the thought process? Because most people will have an experience like that, and then they'll be like, "How can I be on stage? How can how can my message be heard? Uh, like at, at this level?" But you went specifically to like, "How can I get somebody else here?" Uh, so I'm very curious to to go through that thought process because first off, amazing. Uh, and second off, like you don't see that often, right? So like, what was going through your mind? Like, what was that thought process? You know, I've told that story a thousand times and nobody's asked me that question, man. So really great question. <laughs> Thank you. We, we did our homework. <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Honestly, uh, Luis, I've always externalized everything, man. So I think that whole experience of being the outsider always that's an insider mm -hmm. makes me think from outside of myself and even even to a fault, right? Like even even to a fault to the point where it's like, I care more about satisfying others needs before mine. So at that moment, really what went through my head was, wow, all these people think I'm more important than I am. That's super valuable to me. How can I use this to my benefit? <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and to use it to my benefit wasn't how can I get on more stages? It was how can I give somebody else this experience and then they're going to love me for it. I love it. Uh, yeah. Be, being the provider is be that's, that's how I, how I see it, you know? <laughs> and I mean, honestly, like when you're talking about community, it's, it's that, right? It's, you're not talking about like someone in the middle that like rules over everybody else but like everybody's helping each other out and i think that's an important aspect again of, of community 
So I, I'm a little bit curious. You said that as soon as you step down from from that stage and you have people coming on to you, you you get the realization, you know. But I think personally, a lot of these realizations come like over time that you look back and you're like, wow, like look at that time when I had this. This is what I'm learning from that moment. So I'm just curious a little bit to know, did you actually get got that, you know, that thought on that moment or did it came after you started joining, you know, other communities and, and started your, your journey as like a community builder? No, that thought literally hit me like a lightning Let's strike in that moment. But the, the community stuff, right, the, the philanthropic stuff, I had been getting more and more There was a moment where the biggest event that I had put together for Habitat was this like 200 person event. That was like a wine tasting competition thing. It was super cool. And at that point, a couple of years into this whole thing, you start getting, being involved in young professional nonprofit groups, whatever, right? You get, you're going to networking events all the time because that's all you're ever doing. Yeah. And then if you take leadership positions, you're like getting up and introducing people and be like, oh, welcome to this volunteer build. Yep. Welcome to this event. Welcome to blah, 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 blah. So you start getting some, and then you start getting put on, put on like panels, right? But this was my first like big panel where I shared the stage with other people. But what I, what I had noticed was because of all this community stuff, I was becoming a really good public speaker. I was becoming a really good networker. I was getting exposed to people that I had never been exposed to before. So all that stuff was accumulating, but that, yeah. that realization of, When somebody walks in a room and the first time I'm the person on stage, I'm actually a celebrity in their eyes. That had never really come on me like that. That just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I love it. I feel like a lot of people like listening uh, have that moment uh, sometimes in the like content journey. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. When I remember like as soon as we started publishing, like everybody around us was like, hey, you guys got to publish. You guys got to publish. You guys got to be present. You guys got to be consistent. And uh, at first hand. Um, you could see like there was like obviously like very little audience and very little interaction. But the second like we started getting, uh, you know, that recognition of like people commenting, people like, oh, my God, like what you just said makes so much sense. Uh, you just helped me. You just solved my problem, which you did on that stage. Right. Uh, that that was like a, a flow of something very positive coming into like ourselves. Like, okay, like this is so much fuel that I can now use to to like give more like just have such a bigger impact and then build up on that right it starts yeah. little but then but then you can build up on that yeah so. I, i think i want to add a little bit of something to that right you're saying when all these people were telling you to publish 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 i remembered my thought was like and this is this is a reflection that came obviously after starting publishing yeah but it was like wow when you think about it at first it comes from a a little lonely place right where it's like i'm gonna be published and just being by myself out there you know kind of like just being on that stage by yourself and obviously that can be scary because you got fear of judgment like what what other people are gonna oh, yeah. say or there's so many but so as many soon, things yeah as soon as we started publishing we started to notice this community growth right like people commenting and like and then we started having this conversation and say hey let's have a live with you and share here and as the community grow is easier not only for us right but like i feel like it's it just gets better to like share the message and more enjoyable to bring the people in so like yeah. it's a it's a fun journey for sure i think it's a scary one to start and i think obviously your journey was you were um, in those networking groups so i think it happened in a like a natural progression because of the positions yeah. that you were in but for someone that maybe is struggling to start with their content journey right like yes yeah. it does feel scary at first because it feels lonely so i think what we're going to be talking about today of community creation is going to help out a lot because it's going to maybe give you another perspective on hey it's not about me all this content right like it's about other people and and that's what's going to help you grow dude all of communication is about the other person right and content is just communication at scale Right. And, and I have a very similar, I have, I have, a, I have a parallel story when it descended on me, you know, that content was like, works that same way as that stage. Right. Because it's, it's easy. 
Yes. When you're making content, at least you don't you don't have a crowd in front of you. So maybe it, it, it plays better to the person that's afraid of public yeah. speaking. But you also don't get that instant gratification either. Right. You also don't get that feeling of self-importance. You feel kind of like a douchebag talking to your phone when you're walking around. Right. Like I, <laughs> like I'm, I'm going through my 30 day life challenge just <laughs> because it. of you guys. Right. <laughs> because because you guys inspired me to do it. And I'm 10 days in and I still feel like a douche when I'm walking around <laughs> and somebody walks past me and, and I'm talking like, to my phone. Yeah, but like it's funny like you mentioned that, but like the other day we were making like this reflection on, yes, you are talking to a camera, but on the other side you might have 10, 15, 20 people. And then imagine like you're in a room in front of 20 people watching you live. It's I mean, scary, yeah. it, it is challenging, right? And then like, oh my God, I only got 100 views. Only imagine yourself in a room talking to 100 people. I mean, it, okay. it is an hourglass effect too. Like your message is multiplied. Then they're going to take that message and expand it. So Yeah, I mean, even if only like if if only one person out of those 100, you know, actually receives the message and they love it and they are willing to share with other people, like is it still multiplying, right? That multiplier effect. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's very parallel to the live stage, right? Because it's – we. I, I remember my buddy Matt Anderson, who's like my big mentor in all this stuff that I did and the community creation stuff. He would always talk about how every time you're on that stage, you're just like, yeah, man, whoever wants to know more, right? Because we'd be talking to schools a lot. Yeah. And we'd be trying to tell kids to like reach out and like, dude, we want to show you the way. We'll connect you with internships, whatever. And you'd always give out your email and blah, blah, blah. And you might be talking to 50 kids, 100 kids, 300 kids. And one responds, two, three respond. The same thing happens with content. You might be, you know, and I, and I get this a lot from my friends, right? Like I, I definitely get a hard time from <laughs> friends of mine that are not building online businesses yeah. that don't understand what I'm doing with the content thing. They just think it's like, dude, why are you doing what my 16 year old niece is doing? <laughs> right? Like it's, it's, it's different, but the More question people. is, why are they not doing what their 16 year old is doing? That's well, how I feel. Correct. <laughs> they, they haven't, they haven't put, yeah. well, there's a lot of stuff my 16 year old needs to do. Uh, okay. do. So, you know, I, but, but, but that being said, right, like more people, what I, the point I'm trying to make is that yeah. more people take notice than interact and even fewer of them actually follow up. Right. So you might feel like you're wasting your time and all you're doing is looking douchey, talking in front of a camera and being on the Internet. But there's people noticing. Right. Like there's I have I have groups of buddies from Miami that I know like to take a dump on the whole social media thing. And out of that, like chat room of WhatsApp friends that I have like 30 in, there's about five of them that hit me up consistently. Like, yo, man, what you said on Instagram was awesome or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, like yeah. there, there is and none of them have ever commented because they don't want everybody else to see yeah. it. But about five of those guys consistently follow up with me with my messaging. They're like, dude, help me out with this. Help me out with that. Because you're putting value out there at the end of the day if you're doing it right. And it's yep. whoever, it doesn't matter who it doesn't land on. What matters is who it lands on. Exactly. And, That's you know, true. we talk a lot in, in the past episodes, we've mentioned like the silent, the silent watchers, right? Those yeah. people that are there watching. And you just mentioned a very good example of that. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean. Well, I think I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw one out here. Pablo, I think you were a silent watcher you of my were brother a silent uh, watcher. Un until you <laughs> commented and invited him to the content dinner, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. but listen, hey, I, like, hey, I, being I, a silent I, watcher I is not like, bad at all. Full disclosure, I don't tune into a lot of lives, right? Yeah. Like, I just, I knew, I knew your brother, I had met him, I had met him that fateful morning where uh, I showed up soaking wet, <laughs> and, uh, and after that, I saw him, like, going live, blah, 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 but, and I knew he was kind of in a similar space, literally, that was just a... Another like lightning incident. strike, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. like like he was just online in a moment where I'm like, dude, this guy just canceled yeah, on yeah. me. And I'm like, oh, Luis is perfect for this. Yeah, and, it, and that's that also talks about like the consistency, right? Like being present because yeah. again, if he wouldn't have taken the challenge seriously and he would have not been doing the the lives probably yeah. you wouldn't have found out about what we were doing at that, at that moment. Yeah. And, and for those listening, guys, like, uh, go check out the, the other episodes where we actually tell this story. But, like, one of the main things here is consistency, right? Like, um, and you can you can hear from, like, Pablo's story, too, like, how he started and then how he started, the, like, developing the skills that, that 
is not only the consistency on publishing the content, it's also the consistency on improving your skills to continue to do this, right? No matter the circumstances. Because yep. um, even though like there's some people there that might that that might ask you like why are you doing this? Is there a bigger purpose? Yes, we were actually talking the last uh, the the last like couple of days actually about you know what's the thing that drives people to to purchase, right? What's that sell? And one of the big elements is like the building the report, like make sure that there's a connection. Like people people buy from people right and this is one of the things that, and Pablo you can like chime in anytime you want uh the the businesses I th I feel like they miss because once you put in that like facade of hey I'm an institution I'm a business a lot of people tend to lose that personal connection and now they treat people differently they communicate with people different and I think this is where you bring so much value yeah. to this because you're personalizing uh that experience for those companies that you work with um so I'm curious to see like when like obviously you told us like your very big moment you're like epiphany like this is what happens and then you you start evolving um and having these interactions to the point where now you're you work with like a 200 million dollar company right you you build a community for them uh a thousand plus people like in a group com continually continuously engaging providing value so uh what's like your take on that and how can people take advantage of your advice and make sure that you know they, they take it to the next level It's funny that you mentioned that, Luis, because I have this Venn diagram back here that I drew up a little <laughs> earlier because I was just thinking about how I was going to explain it. And uh, conveniently, it's right behind me. But so number one is I realized at a certain moment that content was networking on steroids, right? Like for me, what I showed up at consistently all the time was networking. I was in every room in Miami all the time. And that took a lot of time to build up. And as I went through my journey of going into entrepreneurship again, building up a community for this uh, e-commerce company, then going off on my own and kind of iterating through my whole, how do I prove that the connection thing works? I realized that if you're able to take all the things, everything that works in, in connection, right? In, in building a relationship to yeah. me, quickest way to build relationships is add value to somebody's life, they're forever gonna, they're forever gonna wanna, you know, be like, all right, man, this guy cares about me, right? And that's something that I realized in the nonprofit world and building those connections aside, also shared vulnerability works a lot, right? So yeah. if you can design something where you are creating, and, and this is what the Venn diagram is, right? But like- Yeah, so if, we're gonna, we're if, gonna actually show it to the people like live so they can see it in, in the background. So uh, we actually- We can see it now. So we have value in one corner, and then we have relationships and content right at the bottom. And then the, yeah. right in the middle in red, it says community, correct? Correct, correct. So, you know, for a long time, I was driving community by joining up. So the way that we started these young profit groups, these young professional groups was the way that we would host our meetings, right? To like plan whatever happy hour we were planning or volunteer event we we're planning. We would say our, our monthly meetings, we're gonna have it in the boardroom of somebody's company that is on the board of the charity, right? And like big business leaders are on the boards of charities. Yeah. So the beginning of the meeting would be the big business leader talking about their career, sharing their tips and tricks, having a private Q and A with them. Anybody that wants can then follow up, create the connection, and then you have your meeting, right? So like we would offer people value and a relationship, okay. right? So like you, you were, yes, you were gonna come and volunteer to, to create something, but you're gonna get advice from somebody who's been there and the potential to form a relationship from someone that's been there. And that worked great in person. When I realized that content works the same way as networking created, right? And if I were to, were to redo this again, I would tape all these things, chop them up and split them out, like what we do for JWB, right? Yeah. So what I realized is that if you are driving that and creating content around it, that intersection right there is what creates that community at scale, right? Because you can create community by value and driving relationships. And then if you can distribute that out at scale, now mentorship is the mentorship that I get from Gary Vee, right? Like I've met Gary Vee a couple of times, but he absolutely mentors me in the fact that I listen to all his stuff, I read his books, I listen to his podcast, and I have taken mentorship from his lessons because he is taking interactions with people like me who are asking him how to apply his, the way that he's done things for his life in their own life, yeah. and I've taken a ton of value out of it, right? And that yeah. has created his community. So what I drive companies to do is to figure out that intersection, right? Perfect. Find out 
what your clientele or the people that you are trying to serve and get business from. Figure out what kind of value you can offer them. Figure out how you can turn that into a relationship building process, which normally is a Q&A process, right? So if you are creating like what we're doing with JWB, right? Like if you are creating an interview process around a community leader or a business leader that can give you some advice and then give that and give somebody in your clients or your future clientele or someone that you want to get close to access to interact. Yeah. And then you take that interaction and you redistribute it. Now you are putting people up on that proverbial stage that we talked about and you can, and then you are sharing that knowledge at scale. So, you know, you create to me it's all about being the stage, right? You create that stage yeah. where all that interaction point happens, which for me at first was just a simple panel in a meeting room, but now because we got Zoom, we got YouTube, we got podcasts, we got whatever. Yeah. You can create that. You got Facebook, right? Like what we're doing on a live, you can create that interaction and that value exchange at scale. And it just becomes this ball that keeps feeding that then turns into community. I love it. Uh, we talk often about, you know, those. And thanks for sharing that with us. And you know, if you are listening to the podcast, just make sure to go to our Facebook page and YouTube because this video is going to be there and you can actually see the graph uh, behind Pablo. So you can actually visualize this uh, pretty well. But we talk often about points of contact, right? Um, we, we, we say that content or your marketing, right, is the start of a sale. Like if you're a business and you're producing content, um, it is a way to bring people into your business and and do a sale and 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 then ultimately make profit for that business so to make a sale you need points of contact uh, a lot of people kind of mi like miss take this one or like with with hey i'm gonna call you i'm gonna ask you to come in i'm gonna call you i'm gonna ask you to come in i'm gonna text you and i'm gonna ask you to come in instead why don't we see these points of contact like you are saying right like we create these events and then with content you can redistribute these to your network, to your community, to your stuff. And that's still a point of contact, but it's a, a higher value point of contact because you're providing information, you're building their report, you're building their relationship to the point where they're ready to purchase, they're ready to trust you, they're ready to make you know that transaction. Uh, all this content kind of like help them make that decision a little bit easier. Yeah, definitely. I mean, doing the, the touch points and Pablo, you're going to laugh about this, but you know, if I'm, re I'm going to reference a book right here. <laughs> 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 and if you guys haven't read The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes, he actually talks about the act of selling breaks rapport and education builds up rapport, right? And at the end of the day, if you want to sell to someone, you need to have that rapport, that trust between each other. And building this confidence, th these communities, right? Like offering value, th they help you get that sale, right? Because it's gonna get you more of those quality touch points that you were talking about. Yeah. And now, when you include the content, like Pablo is saying, you're doing it at scale, and you're not building only a, a relationship with one person, right? But you have the the potential of doing it with so many other people out there. So I, I, I think it's fantastic. I think the diagram behind you, definitely, if you're listening again in Spotify, any other platform, go to Facebook and watch it. It's a piece of art. It's a piece honestly. of art. All right. So can we tell the story? Can we tell the story please, real quick of please, why, yeah, of why that's funny, why we laughed about it? I hear the music happening. I know you're trying to cut me off, man. No, you're that? good. You're good. I was actually going to. Stories, stories builds, builds relationships, I, I, too. I, I, yeah, have, yeah. I have a question for you right after you tell this story because we can't, like, <laughs> we have to tell it. Yeah. Go ahead. So. All right. So long story short is I had this idea in my head, a content dinner that I had forever. <laughs> right. And it was just like getting getting a couple of like intelligent people together, having a good conversation and just have it all recorded and then giving everybody little pieces of micro content that they can promote themselves with. Somebody canceled on me last minute. I saw Luis, number one, Here, alive on Facebook the night before. <laughs> and and uh, so I reached out to him. I'm like, hey, man, you want to come to this? He's like, yeah, he comes over. When he gets there, I'm trying to figure out how to solve the problem that I have of onboarding this big client that we have that we're not working with of how do I downstream redistribute my content, which you guys do so well. And he's sitting there telling the story of how they, how you guys got to, I'm talking to the listener, right? I'm not even talking to you guys. Right? <laughs> I love uh, it. <laughs> uh, so, so Luis is sitting there telling the story of 
we went to this conference and then my brother read this book and my brother's like, dude, we got to do this. And then we started doing this and then we go to this other conference and my brother reads this book and he's like, you got to do this. I'm like, you know, like he, he told the story, the whole progression yeah. of the biz bros business I, on like, my brother said this, so I did it. Then my brother said this, so I did it. My brother said, and I was like, bro, I got to meet this brother. It's amazing. And now to this day, that guy. still every single time. Yeah. So it's Fonzie. Every single time you're like, dude, yeah, I got a book for that. So every time you say you got a book for it, like it's the best, man. It makes me so happy. <laughs> no, I love it because uh, it was funny. Like I went, I went live for like five minutes, like right before this episode, uh, still doing it. Right. And, uh, and one of the things like we, we're preparing like this new secret ish project that we're going to be announcing very, very soon, uh, where, and then during the conversation of planning this thing, he goes like, we should have a book club, the Fonzy <laughs> book club. So please. <laughs> yeah, it, it, honestly, uh, it's a little selfish out here, but I was like, we should have a Fonzy book club. <laughs> so it actually makes me finish more books. I'm like, I'm going to be, you know, have a commitment with people out it. there that like, hey, we're going to review this book. So it's going to make me have to read it you know all the way through so i love it Honestly, I, if, you, if you if you start on linkedin you just start kind of giving out your book recommendations on a daily basis right like that's that's why, great content yeah. that is real quick copy that's just like it's a good hey idea. um you know uh play bigger this was the category design playbook it was awesome i learned xyz boom yeah. done like you'll you'll get a following from that man that's, you're the maven that's value right there that's right? value right value. there and we get people commenting we build relationships <laughs> And since it's content, we are doing it at scale. Hey, if boom. you're li if you're listening you, or Pablo. watching, you are actually seeing this strategy like unfold in your eyes. Like you, <laughs> you cannot like you can in your ears. I think. Oh yeah, or you're listening in your ears. You're watching <laughs> through your eyes. Yes, that is correct. Oh my goodness! But it's happening in your brain. It's happening yeah, in your brain. Right. So um, and, and people think this is harder than is like that it like than it is. Like you could actually do this very simple. A lot of the people that listen to us that communicate with us always have a hard time trying to figure out the, the technical side of it. How do I do it? Like what is the equipment? Uh, we have been having content conversations with a ton of people through Instagram. Instagram live. It allows you to pro to be present for their audience, to your audience. And if you have these kind of conversations, it doesn't have to be a big fancy podcast. It can start right there and then you can evolve from that. I mean, you have been doing this for, for a couple of years now. Like we have been doing this for a couple of years now. Uh, so if you are starting up, please go ahead and start, right? Yeah. And I, I, Pablo, I have a, a question for you because I want the listeners to relate relate a little bit more to the whole situation of community building because again as marketers we always listen your best asset is your email list right? and